Hello and welcome to another part of the IV generator tool. So in this part, we're going to focus around creating the leaves for our tool. So if you followed along, you would have this result where we create the branching systems. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start off from here, uh, our lines. And from this, we're then going to define how we're going to scatter those leaves. One of the first things that I want to do here is defining how the leaf should be rotated or orientated along those lines. So it's a good idea now to actually, again, uh, transfer some data from our, from our original geometry. So you're going to go here and here we actually did that a while ago. And I'm going to copy paste this, place it over here. So we're going to copy here specifically the normal. So I want to grab the normal from the shape so I know that my branches are rotating in the right direction. Otherwise, they might, for example, rotate in, in my shape, which should be a bit weird. So getting that normal, uh, as you can see, will be able to help me with that. Now, I don't necessarily want to use this as my normal. I actually want to rename uh, what you currently see as normal as my up vector. So we want to say that my normal is actually now called up vector, which is also a vector that Houdini uses by default to define rotations. So rotations in Houdini are defined mostly by the normal and up vector, or you can also use the orient attribute, which is the, which is based on a quahedron. Now to define my normal, I'm going to use the polyframe nodes. So polyframe. And in here, we're going to say that we want to only have the tangent name and we want to overwrite the naming to normal. And now we can actually see that my normals are sort of like aligning along the branches. So they actually nicely follow the branches. So that's the normal that I actually would like to have. So now we have two informations for the rotations. So I know where the branch direction is going. Like you could see here, like it's nicely going this direction. And I also have the direction of the ideal uh, position to like have it facing outwards of the shape. And to further go on here, I already brought some testing shapes. So here I had a couple planes and these are actually from mega scans. So you can do the same thing and look up mega scans that you like from a certain leaf or ivy and convert that here into shapes. So these are actually multiple different ivy shapes. Uh, you can also just for now, if you don't have that available, uh, for example, just use a grid shape and you're going to make like a very small grid shape. So don't make it too large. Uh, going to maybe align it here to what I have. And we can, for example, say my grid shape should look like this, uh, maybe two by two. So I will make a template for demonstration here and then later plug in my custom shape. So. Let's do it like so. I'm going to press uh, number two on my keyboard to grab the points, then press D to move. So we can move this into like a branch shape. I'm going to unlock the shapes here, move it like so. Uh, move these points quickly here. Um, so we have like somewhat basic shape of a leaf um, that you could use. So this can be like a base leaf shape, for example. So let's start out with just that. So now we want to copy uh, to curves. So copy to curve. This is my shape. And this is then my geometry to copy on. And as you can see, it's actually already in a good uh, location. So you can see that the leaves are facing outwards. Um, so if I don't implement this logic here, you can see that this rotation is just not correct at all. So that's why, again, I implemented these things here, these steps. So you can see that this actually works really well. Now, the only thing left here is to actually maybe play around a bit with the scaling. So uh, let's play with, again, randomize uh, scales or attribute randomize. We're going to, again, go and grab uh, the p scale, so p scaling, 
this is of course dimension one for now it goes from zero to one so it probably is a good idea to for example fill in something else than number one so 0.5 to one and maybe lower here this so that looks a bit better we can also further go into the copy to curves uh, we can preferably set this actually to up the y-axis it's not going to maybe do much because i'm actually providing uh, enough interesting data here for the tool to work correctly and we are going to open our rotations it's always interesting to enable these and play around with them so you can see that we can rotate them like so we can rotate them like that and we can also rotate them like that so we can play around with these values to maybe add some slight for example like slight pitching here or maybe you can have like some random value here so we can for example have like a little variation of those branches so that looks pretty good and pretty interesting um what can also be interesting actually here for visualizing more is to maybe give this a color so a color gradient actually uh this should be actually on the z axis so here the z axis and we can say from green to this dark color and let's back an instance so now we have those leaves now let's talk a bit about using a variant attribute so in our copy to curves we have here use piece attribute variant so let's say i have here two versions so i have this green one and i have this uh, more orange one i want to randomly now select this or scatter this on that shape so what we want to do is we're going to create an attribute variance so create attribute we're going to just call this variance we're going to make sure it's an integer and this is variant number zero and here we have variant number one so we can create multiple of them you can create five ten twenty versions so in this case i'm going to demo it with two so now i have these two values here available and i want to merge them actually together so merge and put it in over here and when i copy them you can see that they will actually just overlap with each other um, so it's not necessarily fully working so i want to enable my variant attribute and now i also want to create a variant attribute on the points so each point will either have value zero or value one and this is of course representing to that green version or that orange version so we want to say random attribute and this random attribute is of course called variant and this needs to be set to custom discrete so either the value of course need to be dimension one so either the value is zero or one in my case and what we currently see is that it is still not fully working so what you need to do with these variant attributes is they actually need to be an integer on both sides so currently here this is still a float so we need to do a costing here so cost of attributes so we want to say that variant is actually now an integer and now we actually have the result of being scattering that yellow one and the green one randomly so based on this here i can now uh, plug in a random value and we are randomly scattering that value and this is basically how I also did the mega scans one here. So these are the ones from mega scans. And if I do an explode version of that, you can see that I, I will have a couple leaves here available, like 10 or, or so. And each of them uh, have, have their own variant attributes. So as you can see, they all have that variant attribute. So either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, up to 10. So I have 11 different variations so with that created uh, i can also quickly show you the v actually as well so this is coming from like a texture atlas so you can make your own you can do this by yourself you can grab something from like i said like quixel uh, and open that here as well so i want to plug in that into my system here and currently it's only going to grabbing uh the variant from zero to one 
So in this case, I actually had 10. So I'm going to have to increase this to 0 to 10. And as you can see, that like now I have a lot of variation. So it's quite interesting to actually build up that variations to, for example, 10. So you have a lot of different shapes going on here, which makes which makes the tool really interesting to uh, to use. Now to finish this off, um, we're gonna just simply merge a couple things together. So we want to merge the branches with the leaves, like so. And we also want to maybe check quickly here with our input shape. So I'm gonna grab this and then we have this here. We can also give this some more colors here. Like for example, I can quickly give this some brownish color. So we have like a quick branch here. And that was it for this part. So in this part or this, this stage, we sort of mainly have the logic of our tool. So it's perfectly working to generate IV around objects. And at next stage, I want to create a digital asset and also test this out in game engine and see how well this works. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.